What's up everybody, welcome to Money Management channel. My name is Andrei and today I'm gonna be doing an update on MMTLP and FINRA saga. And on today's video guys, I will show you the latest news directly related to our story. I will show you the most recent 8k form that was uh, published by NextBridge just recently. Then I will continue with the news uh, from Drew Diligence uh, about uh, his uh, meeting in uh, Congress. And uh, on top of that, uh, I will show you an update from Richard Hoffman in regards to his arbitration and a new lawsuit that he will file within the next uh, several weeks. And uh, at the end of this video, I will share my personal story. And guys, it is very important for me. That is why please stay tuned and watch this video till the very end. And before we dive deep into all of this, please hit the like button for YouTube algorithm and hit the like button for me. You know that just recently I had a surgery and uh, for now I'm still not in the best shape. But still, I have uh, to do my job and I have to help MMTLP community. That is why, in exchange for my efforts, I want you to click the like button and to share this video with your friends and family. So, and let's start with the news itself. Just yesterday, uh, NextBridge Hydrocarbons uh, published their 8K form that uh, basically was issued on uh, March 21st. And uh, let me go to this article that was published on MMTLP resources. Next bridge hydrocarbons loses two board members who resigned from their positions. They cite personal reasons and resigned about a week apart. This makes two resignation within about a week from the oil and gas exploration company. And guys, if you want to read this document by yourself, you can uh, click on this link and uh, basically do it. But in general, I have to say that it is not the best sign when two C-level executives resigned uh, at the same time. And let me quote to this. We are not sure what's happening at next bridge, but multiple board resignations typically aren't a positive development. Hopefully, we will hear from Greg McCabe soon with possibly more information. And yes, uh, for now, technically, we don't have uh, any problems with the share price. Unfortunately, because uh, next bridge hydrocarbons doesn't have a price, it is not a publicly tradable company. But still, in general, these type of news uh, are more likely bearish news. And we have to know more information from uh, Greg McCabe in order to uh, know these uh, details. So, let me show you further. Uh, just uh, yesterday, um, Drew Diligence uh, wrote this tweet and I covered it in uh, my yesterday's video. He wrote, tomorrow night I'm gonna drop a bomb on all of you. Tomorrow night you learn what I've been up uh, to for three months who was involved and exactly what uh, the end result was. You don't want to miss this. And uh, he made uh, this uh, space call and uh, I have to say that uh, the main idea of uh, this space call is that uh, he had a meeting with Esther Pierce. On top of that, uh, the meeting happened with the presence of other uh, Congress members. Unfortunately, the due diligence didn't want to disclose uh, their names. And uh, he added this tweet, uh, he basically gave uh, to uh, commissioners uh, this document, this set of documents. Here is the cover page of the binder that I delivered to the SEC when I met uh, with the parties involved. The binder included 1. Cover page 2. Faces of MMTLP collage uh, 3. Norman letter to FINRA 4. FINRA response 5. NBHPR responding to FINRA 6. The breakdown I wrote about FINRA's response. 7. Every single congressional letter we had. And guys, the main idea of uh, his uh, meeting, the main result is that uh, a lot of uh, people from Congress, uh, uh, m let's put it this way, more people from Congress know about our situation right now. And he asked uh, to Esther Pierce just one question. He asked the guidance uh, what should he do in order to solve the problem? And uh, he asked uh, some more contacts uh, in order to make a meeting with uh, this contact and with next bridge hydrocarbon sea levels executive. And as far as I understand, this meeting happened. Uh, he received this uh, uh, contact and he uh, gave uh, this contact to uh, I don't know who, because uh, again, the due diligence didn't uh, disclose any names except uh, Esther Pierce. 
And it is the downside of uh, this entire uh, news because why in the world he is hiding these names? Is it a top secret information or what? Basically, I don't understand it. On top of that, uh, uh, the results uh, should be disclosed uh, within the next uh, 30 days. So, we have again, we have uh, another delay of some results uh, uh, from Congress. And uh, I have to say that uh, this news definitely is not a bombshell. And uh, I have to admit that, uh, uh, for example, Don Fis uh, made much more meetings with Congress members, uh, with very famous Congress members. Uh, with the subpoena power, you can see it uh, by this photo. And uh, on top of that, uh, he made uh, during just two weeks uh, uh, 94 in-person meetings. He made uh, 75 packets uh, drop-offs. And uh, I have to say that uh, not only uh, Don Fees and Drew Diligence uh, made uh, these uh, meetings, also Anna Trades. Uh, have uh, very tight contacts with uh, some Congress members as well. That is why I don't think that this news uh, deserves uh, to be a bombshell. But it is what it is. Uh, in my opinion, due diligence uh, is trying to do his best in order to help the community. And in general, it is definitely a positive news uh, that uh, might work in our favor. And uh, we definitely have to wait for the results of this news. And uh, that's it. Let's go forward. Uh, Richard Hoffman, another our headliner, uh, published this tweet just uh, recently, and basically he made a video in regards uh, to his uh, update uh, uh, related to MTLP. And uh, I have to say that uh, he is in the process of arbitration. For those of you who don't know, he is in the, in the process of arbitration against uh, uh, Fidelity. And uh, <laughs> It is quite funny situation, but every uh, decision that was made uh, by uh, arbiters was made against Richard Hoffman. And it is quite weird, but uh, all of these decisions uh, were made uh, without any explanation. And uh, that is why Richard about to file a new lawsuit against FINRA, because FINRA is uh, an authority who is uh, in charge of this type of arbitration. And he will file this lawsuit uh, uh, in order to uh, refuse to pay the fees. And uh, these fees for this arbitration uh, is quite huge. And uh, he wants to do it because uh, arbiters doesn't do their work properly. And uh, he has uh, even uh, an intention to find out uh, is he capable of uh, leading this arbitration. And uh, that is the main question. So, again... Uh, he will file this uh, lawsuit uh, before the ending, uh, before the end of this arbitration, and the end of arbitration uh, should happen uh, at the end of June, if I remember it correct. So let me show you another quite interesting update. Uh, Rare DD wrote uh, these couple of tweets just uh, recently, and he is trying to solve this puzzle. In other words, uh, he is trying to find the connections between the wrongdoers, and he found out this. Kirsten Wagner, connected to GTS Securities CEO Ari Rubinstein and Georgetown Professor James Angel via Modern Markets Initiative, and directly connected to D-list contributor Brandon Kochkodin via Forbes, connected to Charles Gasparina via Milken Conferences and Fox. A lots of overlap, but probably nothing. And he added several screenshots uh, that proves uh, his words. And guys, I highly suggest you to watch his uh, main video that he published at the very beginning of uh, March. It is a two hours long video which explains uh, all his uh, efforts, uh, all his due diligence that he made uh, during the last uh, several months. On top of that, he added this six hours ago. Joel Kinahan, advisor at Ari Rubinstein's uh, clearest and senior contributor at Forbes for 12 plus years. Easily a coincidence, though, that Forbes allowed six months to be spent making a comic strip about MMTLP. So, yes, we know that uh, a lot of people were involved in the process uh, of uh, pushing our case down. And uh, some of them uh, even pretended that they were an, an MMTLP shareholders, like... Uh, James J. Angel. But in general, all of these people are nothing else uh, but the paid shields who are trying to push our case down. And uh, we know a lot. For now, we know a lot in order to defend ourselves. And guys, in my opinion, 
we will win this battle because all of the facts are showing us that uh, the wrongdoers are inside the authorities and uh, we have uh, we know a lot about uh, their relationships with other companies who potentially nakedly shorted uh, MMTLP shares uh, back uh, in 2022. And guys, let me tell you my personal story. I have a wife and two children aged 11 and 15, as well as a small dog. After 30 years of living in Russia near the Baikal Lake, we decided to move. Now we reside in Serbia. Although I don't own any MMTLP shares, I invest a lot of time creating daily MMTLP videos. I have been doing this every day without days off and holidays for more than one and a half years. Now I wish to buy back this time from my family, from my children. We've agreed that I will ask the MMTLP community to support me and I will give all the money to the children. Therefore, if you believe that I am providing useful content for you and uh, wish to support me, you can join my Patreon account. For $5 a month, I will add your name to my list of supporters if you wish. Thank you in advance. The link you can find in the description below. So, I think that's all information that I want to provide you. If you like my video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And see you guys and girls next time. Bye! I got the cash in the bag, stadium pack Born a rock star in this life, gone live it up on the attack Baby, I'm bad, I just wanna get caught up in this life I'm crazy, I'm bad, doing no